Hello everybody, welcome back to the video. Today we'll be taking a look at the Dota Mine cards for July. We've got some spicy cards coming up and we're going to go through them card by card, discuss what they're going to be doing and also what decks they might be good in. So a bit of theory crafting. I'm going to rank them in terms of how good I think they are, how likely they are to change the meta and if you guys should get them or not. Also keep in mind, these are Dota Mines. So take everything with a grain of salt as things are subject to change. So first of all, we're going to look at the Season Pass card, Gwenpool, a card that has been quite anticipated, I must say. And we're going to finally see Gwenpool in the game. She is going to basically pick a random card in your hand four times and give it plus two power each time so what exactly does that mean it means that it can duplicate pick the same card so if you look at the cards like for example nakia which will buff all the cards in your hand one single time if for example you have one card on your hand she can buff it four times so that is going to ensure that you can potentially get all this card's value now the thing that makes this card a bit tricky is hand size that is relatively full especially on a later turn like turn four she's going to buff up a bunch of cards and are you going to be able to play all those cards in the last stage of the game to get all that value? That's a bit tricky. So I think this card is going to be useful in possibly two ways. Probably going to be useful in a deck like Soul Surfer, for example, which has a lot of cards that want to get buffed up. Things like Brood and things like Sebastian Shaw will be pretty good with that. There will be a couple of cards that should get very good value with the Gwenpool. Also, Absorbing Man could also be pretty useful if you use Absorbing Man onto something like Brood. But um, this card can get a lot of value. Obviously, four times two, eight power so potentially 12 points just flat 12 points with a little bit of bonuses depending on synergies like for example brood and obviously sebastian shaw um, overall i think this card could also be useful maybe in a kazoo deck a deck with a lot of one drops because then you can make sure that you get all those buffs because if you play let's say gwenpool on turn four and it buffs up a whole bunch of low cost cards that are like one cost then you can actually play all those cards and you can get all that value from gwenpool so that could potentially be a way to play it but overall i think this card does have one big weakness is the fact that it's a four cost card which means you don't have much time to get use of all those buffs so we'll have to see overall doesn't look too bad doesn't look completely insane just yet but um i mean in theory 12 4 can be pretty decent then moving on to hydra bob he is going to be after each turn move to another location if you are losing here so it's a 2-5, which means it's very similar to Silk. Silk has a very similar stat line. She also has a somewhat similar ability where she moves around depending on a certain condition. His condition is you need to be losing that lane. So you could use this card in a maybe Silky Smooth deck. You can maybe use it to make use of things like Craven. You could also combo this card potentially with things like Captain Marvel because then you can play Hydra and Captain Marvel can offset the downside of, of the Hydra. If you're losing this location, um, he can jump off and, and Captain Marvel can jump in and fill any gaps. Uh, but overall, I think this card could be useful in a deck with Silky Smooth. Obviously, the Craven buff is going to be a nice one. Also, could be useful in a Cerebra 5 deck since it's a 5 power card. And next month, we're obviously getting Nocturne, which is coming to the game, which will also be um, a nice support for Cerebra 5. So this one could actually also be quite useful in Cerebra 5. A nice low-cost card with a you know decent-sized body. Very, very useful in Cerebra 5 there. And could be solid addition to that. Then moving on now to Copycat. This is what I'm actually quite scared about. So the reason being is I think this card might be useful in a mill archetype, which is quite terrifying to me. When you draw this card, now this is a very unique card because this effect takes place the second you draw this card. You don't need to play it. It doesn't have an on reveal. It just immediately does the ability. When you draw this card, steal the text from the bottom card of your opponent's deck. So there's two applications. One, it kind of can play as a three cost Iron Ad. It's a three five. So very similar stat line to Iron Ad. It's also a three cost card, which means still the surface energy as well, by the way. But because it's a three cost card and five power, it means it doesn't really have to do a whole lot to be good. If it steals just an Angela, it's great. If it steals um, an Elsa's ability, it's great. If it steals something with a bad ability, which is actually something that Iron Lad can't even do, you don't have to play it. Like, let's say it copies an Ebony Morph of your opponent, or not the copies, but it actually steals the ability of Ebony Morph from your opponent. You can just go, ah, okay, well, I'm just not going to play this card then. Not the end of the world, right? Now, what's even more interesting is this is very useful in a mill deck because when you steal your opponent's bottom card ability, you know, often your opponent's not going to draw their bottom card, so, you know, who really cares, right? But... If you're milling your opponent's cards and they have to draw this last card, they're going to have to play that card or they're going to have to draw that card. So it, it impacts them more. It's a dead card now. So this is going to be potentially very useful in a mill deck because it just gives you one extra... It takes away one extra card from your opponent. One more card that they just can't use or just lose, which is very valuable. Um, overall, though, like I said, it's a 3-5 stat line. Its ability takes place immediately. You don't have to even play the card. As long as you draw the card, its ability will trigger. 
and if you get a great ability woohoo you got a three five with maybe maybe you get an iron man then you get a three five iron man maybe you get a um, a loki and you want to play loki in this game you know you could find something very useful in certain matchups and it can be very very strong and if you don't find something useful you just don't have to play it you just just skip it and and go on with your life not at the end of the world i think this card is gonna be very very scary and the fact that it's supporting a um mole archetype is quite scary as well because mole is doing pretty well right now and there's a lot of mole decks running around then moving on now to ajax now ajax is going to be all right and moving on now to ajax we are going to have ajax which is going to basically be an ongoing card that will get plus one power for each card in play that is afflicted with negative power. Now this is each card in play. So it's both your board and your opponent's board. So this already looks like it's going to synergize very well with Hazmat. Because obviously Hazmat affects the entire board. It's going to work very well with Abomination High Evolutionary. Because if you're going to try get value for High Evolutionary Abomination. Which is going to make itself one cheaper for every card damage from your opponents. Obviously it makes sense to play Ajax and kind of double up on the payoff. So it's a 4-4. And if it triggers about 4 or 5 times. It's already playing as like a 9-4 or maybe a 10-4 or whatever and this could end up playing for a lot more points with hazmat of course because hazmat will damage your entire opponent's entire board and your entire board which means this could in theory play for like 20 plus points which is kind of insane but that's a bit of a rare circumstance and there is one big downside has a bit of anti-synergy with luke cage because when you want to play a card um, like hazmat you often want to play luke cage as well but if you're playing luke cage you also you don't want to be playing ajax with it rather i think where this deck or this card could actually work very well is the deck with I played it actually a bunch myself it's a deck that plays with high evolutionary it plays with annihilus it plays with debris it plays with all that kind of stuff you give the debris over to your opponent the, the rocks at least after you play hazmat this will give you like a nice big finish with that deck so it'll do well with things like that could do damage things like maybe wasp the high evolutionary version of wasp of course cyclops whatever and this could do well but again it's a little bit iffy because you need a lot of other cards supported it doesn't get value by itself you need other cards supported and you also need to of course um draw this card with all the other cards as well then moving on now to cassandra cassandra is going to be a card that has a very unique ability it's one that i've never seen this word before so i'm not actually entirely even sure how to evaluate it, it says on reveal drain one power from each card in your opponent's deck now I don't exactly know what Drain is going to mean. Does it mean plus one power to her, minus one power from that card? Does it... Because if it does, that's that. this card's just straight up broken. I mean, if you play this card and it... On turn three, there's going to be six cards left in your opponent's deck, typically. Which means this card immediately gets plus six power. Which makes her a seven for three. Which also has solar surface energy because she's a three cost. And, well, you're also minusing one power from all the cards in your opponent's deck. Which means if they want to play any of those cards, they're going to also take some damage. Which means this card is going to play for ten-ish points quite often. Which is kind of insane. I'm not sure if it is going to work that way. I would imagine draining means that if a card is at zero power, it can't get drained further. So if your card is, let's say, has something like a Taskmaster or an Iron Man or something, it won't affect that card, I'm guessing. But remember, this is all bit speculative because we don't actually know exactly how this card is going to work from other card games draining and other games draining usually means like it's it's an exchange it's minus there and plus here which if it does work the same way that'll be a very very scary card minus one power from all your opponent's cards in the deck which again is typically going to be about six cards in the deck at this stage of the game and then plus one power to her obviously the later you play this card it is going to be a lot worse you play on turn four she's already going to lose two value if you play on turn five she's going to lose four value so that you can't really play it late which maybe that's how it's balanced maybe the fact that it has to be played on turn three makes it potentially um not as of a power but if you do play this card on turn three and the ability does function this way it is going to be a very scary card and again another card that is three costs so another potentially support card for for um a silver surfer deck which is quite scary so let's get into the ranking now and see how we want to rank these decks or these cards should i say i'm gonna go ahead and give the gwenpool so i kind of want to say it's a must buy just because it's season pass card and usually when it comes to season pass cards i think the value of the season pass is almost always worth it so i'm gonna go ahead and put it in the, in the must buy section just because of the fact that season pass however if i'm going to be honest and let's pretend this is not a season pass card maybe you're watching this video at a later stage um, when this is just a regular series five card i would probably say buy only if you need other cards in the spotlight cash um, so that's the difference that the fact that season pass card is making me put this is honestly making me put it two tiers higher than what i think it needs to be but because season pass card i'm gonna put it in a must buy just because i think season pass card you should always get 
Otherwise, I'll put it over here if buy if you need other cards in the spotlight. I think it's a pretty solid ability, but it is a little bit awkward because the forecast card, because the forecast card, you don't have much time to actually make use of all that value. Then moving on to Ajax here. I think Ajax is going to be... Hmm, this is a tricky one. It's somewhere between these two. Um, it's buy if you need other cards in spotlight or only get if you have excess resources. I'm not entirely sure... Um, honestly, I think I'm going to lean more towards buy. I need to have excess resources. I feel like the anti-synergy with Luke Cage is a big downside, but in certain decks, in certain situations, if you draw well, this card can actually do some um, very good work, but it is a little bit situational. Hydra Bob, I think, is going to be decent in a Cerebra 5 deck. Um, it's also going to be somewhat decent in a Silky Smooth deck. I think that gives it two solid enough options. However, the downside, of course, being this card will move locations if you are losing that location, which makes it it's a bit difficult to actually hold that location then um, since you're going to lose additional firepower there. So... I don't know. Uh, I'm probably going to put this one next to Ajax. I think it's in the same tier as Ajax. Then moving on now to... I think I'm going to go for Copycat. Copycat, honestly, is a very scary card. This one is going to be very, very scary for, for mill decks. It's also going to be like another Iron Lad type of card. So... Honestly, I'm going to put in meta changing. This card, I think, especially considering how much I think it's going to push Muldex and make Muldex even stronger with the ready arm, that could actually change the meta. If Mull becomes, if Mull starts becoming very popular, it starts changing the meta around because Mull is the kind of deck, it's very polarized matchups. When Mull is popular, it makes certain other archetypes decks unplayable, which start shifting the meta quite a lot so i think copycat might potentially be a meta changing card so i'm gonna put it over here i mean it's a solid card all around I mean, you can play in a uh, silver surfer deck as well will be good in silver surfer you could also just play as a pure value card the same way that you play iron lad and it gives you information about your opponent's deck as well you can see what they're playing in the deck just by drawing this card which is quite valuable i think it's a solid card and probably be meta changing then also cassandra i think cassandra also has a, p a possibility to be a meta changing card because this ability assuming this works the way i think it's gonna work which is plus one power minus one power from your opponent's side uh, or opponent's deck rather if it does work that way this card i think is gonna be a meta changer and it's gonna be insane especially in um, soul surfer as well since it's a three cost but just in general a three cost card that's playing for like 10 power on average is kind of crazy and that one will also probably be a meta changing card if it releases the way it is um shown here which you know subject to change and all last but not least let's get through some data mines so you guys can see the spotlight caches for these cards um now remember again these are data mines so remember things are subject to change um so looking at these cards that are coming out specifically let's go at look at hydro bob's spotlight cash so hydro bob is coming with nebula galactus and um obviously hydro bob itself nebula very good card right now galactus a little bit of a meme hydro bob probably not gonna be that great i mean it looks like it's okay-ish like a similar vibe to silk which is not a terrible card but not a great card either uh, but overall, I think unless you don't have Nebula, I think if you have Nebula, probably skip the spotlight. If you don't have Nebula, you might want to grab her. She's a very valuable card. Um, but the other cards, not looking that great. Then moving on now to Ajax's spotlight cache. There is Dark Hawk, Beta Ray Bull with Ajax. Now, both these cards are not terrible. They're not exactly meta right now, but they're, they, you know, they, they do have their, their times and they, they might end up popping in in the meta at some point in the future. But overall, I think this one, if you already have Dark Hawk especially, I think you might want to skip this one as well. But, you know, you might want to be grabbing that Dark Hawk if you don't already have it. And Beta Ray Bull is a very fun card. So if you don't have that either, it is very fun. It's not a bad card either. Then moving on to Copycat Spot. Like this one's actually very valuable. You have both Thanos and Call Obsidian together, which these are two cards that synergize very well together. And you also have Copycat. This is probably the spotlight cash I would recommend you guys get if you don't have these cards, especially. Um, this one looks like it's a very solid value. Um, very good cards here all around. I think all of these cards are decent. Thanos obviously take, took a little bit of a nerf recently and he's not as popular as he once was, but people are still playing Thanos and he's definitely still a uh, meta deck that people do need to respect. So definitely would recommend going for the spotlight if you don't have any of these cards, especially. Then last, we also have... Um Cassandra Spotlight. Cassandra is going to be coming with Hope Summer's very, very good card and Proxima Midnight, which is a decent card. She's a little bit specific to a certain archetype, that being Modoc Discard. But in those archetypes, she is a very good card. So I think especially Hope Summer is also a very good card. This is another good spotlight. We have Cassandra, which looks very so solid, and Hope Summer, which is a very good card. Hope Summer is honestly one of the strongest cards in the game, I think, right now. Probably top five strongest cards. So I would definitely go for this spotlight, especially if you don't have Hope Summers as well. 
probably worth getting then looking at um the data mine so the variants just lost a little bit of um variant love um, obviously we've seen some of the spotlight variants ajax is going to be a spotlight variant i believe this one this one's also going to be a spotlight variant i really like this cable variant this one is a pandot one i'm gonna definitely keep my eye for that one that one looks quite solid and then we also have what else do we have that we like this deadpool variant this is gonna be a season pass variant i really like the look of this deadpool variant it looks quite amazing i definitely want to get my hold of that one this one looks quite hilarious i want to i kind of want to get this one just a meme on people this one is <laughs> this one is quite hilarious actually this destroyer variant also looking very good definitely want to grab that one when it comes out um what else here looks pretty solid super giant one doesn't look bad this venom one looks very nice i really like this venom one quite a lot and um this wolverine one here also looking very very nice actually all of these wolverine variants looking quite nice but especially this one um so those are some of the variants that will be coming out in july anyway that is probably going to conclude the video i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys learned something um again these cards are subject to change so keep that in mind but if you what are you guys thoughts are of these new cards are you guys excited for any of them Overall, they look like there are some pretty good cards, like obviously Cassandra and Copycat look very solid. The others look kind of mediocre-ish, but again, they're, they're possibly still going to change. The numbers might tweak a bit. We've already seen Sage, which was the previous daughter of mine. She's already been adjusted slightly, but overall, I guess you can expect this type of vibe from these cards. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section below. What are you guys' thoughts of these cards? Are you guys excited for them? And I'll see you guys again next time. Take care, everyone. Bye.